Okay, so we're going to talk uh, about wave formation in this series of uh, short videos. Um, this is kind of basic oceanography, you know, basic geography, really, uh, how waves are formed. And waves are formed uh, pretty obviously by the wind. And I used to say years ago it was like a stone going into a pond, which is not true at all. Because that's displacement. There is a type of wave that we do have from displacement, and the tsunami was one of those, you know. That was a terrible thing. But that wasn't anything to do with the wind or weather. That was an earthquake, underwater movement. That was displacement. A bit like having that stone in a pond. We're really surfing waves that are caused by a transference of energy. And that's really, if you imagine you blowing on your coffee, or a soup, or whatever, and you see little waves, that's exactly what happens. Now on the weather chart, on what we call the synoptic chart, you'll see these kind of things, these kind of round circles like this. And that could be over the land, it could be over the, the sea. So we'll talk about them being over the sea. These are isobars, we're gonna talk about that in another uh, video. But let's keep it simple, it's wind. It's wind blowing over the surface of the water. And it's transmitting energy into the water. So we're going to take a microscopic part of that bit of storm there, and we're going to put that bit here. Here it is there. There's a little bit of wind, uh, sea there, and the wind is blowing over it. The first thing it does, a bit like you blowing on your coffee, it starts to move the surface of the sea around. In fact, in oceanography, it's called a sea. It's kind of all confusing and stuff. Um, but what happens is that energy goes through the millions and zillions and whatever molecules of water. And they kind of knock each other. Bum, 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 and that starts to create an oscillation. If you do know your physics and stuff, this is the same with lots and lots of uh, different waves. And here I get like a spiral shape. These are our waves forming. And these waves travel away from my storm area. Again, if you just kind of blow on your coffee, all right, there's a bit where your energy's entering, but those little waves you created, they just keep going. And they leave our storm area. So I'm going to show you what happens when they leave our storm area. They start to travel in bumps. One wave, then another wave. And then we might have a period of no waves. Now we call this a set of waves. Now I'm going to draw a set of waves here. Here's our storm area. Our wind was blowing there. La 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 la. There's our waves forming. And they leave in a pattern. Now you can call this a wave train. In fact, here's our energy coil traveling away. In fact, people think they just travel like, like a train, carriage, carriage, carriage. They don't. They actually pass over each other. It's really, it's really complex what's going on. And they'll have like a pulse. You've got a time of waves, it's called a set of waves, and a time of no waves. Either when you get those really stormy days where the wind is right next to the land and you've got kind of messy kind of waves going on, um, there is a pattern. But this, what I'm showing you now, is what we actually call ground swell. Ground swell, the wave is traveling long distances. And the waves could travel in twos, could travel in tens, could travel in fives. Depends on what's happening in that storm area on the frequency and the pattern. Now later on, we'll be talking about uh, wave period, how you kind of use the synoptic chart to, to uh, predict waves. But at the moment, let's just talk these waves. They travel vast distances. The furthest I think anybody's seen a wave travel uh, is from a storm below New Zealand, just above the Antarctic, and the waves travel to Oregon. Now that's most of the world. I mean, even in California, you have these New Zealand swells, massive distances. The waves that hit Hawaii in the winter, they'll travel from an area called the Aleutian Ocean, between Russia and Alaska. They'll come down, they hit the Hawaiian Islands, but they don't stop. They're detectable in the Southern Oceans, in the Antarctic. So, they, you know, it's vast distances they travel. They will lose energy. Uh, in our school in Sri Lanka, 
we have Indian Ocean swells, Southern Indian Ocean, and they may be hitting some parts of uh, Indonesia quite strongly. By the time they get up to Sri Lanka or in the Maldives, they're a little bit less powerful. So they can lose power over distance, but they keep traveling. You can get an opposite wind will knock these out. Now this happens here, this is a particularly strange thing in the Canaries, we get something called a Sirocco, a desert wind, Kalima, Sirocco, and it's so powerful. Coming off the Sahara, it can take a decent like four foot shoulder high what kind of day and blow against it and nearly flatten it out. It'll almost like take the wave down and flatten it out. Okay, waves travel vast distances and eventually they're gonna meet the land. Now, it could be rock, it could be beach, it could be anything, coral, whatever, but the same thing happens. And we'll keep it really simple how it works. Here's a beach, side view, house on the beach. Here's the water, the beach sinking away there, it could be rocks, whatever. Here's a wave, and another wave, and another wave, and on and on. Now, these two waves here are kind of free. There's their energy coil, and they're traveling along towards the beach. But this one here, it started to feel the bottom of the rocks or the sand or whatever. So the bottom part kind of slows down. It's friction. It's actually called shoaling in oceanography. The bottom part slows down. The top part doesn't know that's happening, and it falls forward. That's why a wave breaks. Now, it's a great thing, I always think, without being sort of too cosmic about it all, but when you are looking at the sea and you see those sets of waves you're not looking at water moving you're looking at energy this energy moving through water now a bunch of ducks know that the ducks are sitting there or seagulls they see a wave coming it's not broken they just sit there they know they're not going to go anywhere. they go up and go down now if that wave started to break and become white water they go oh that's water moving they'd fly away so next time you go to a beach and you see the surf Think, well, the lines of energy, I can see those. The white water is water moving, but 75% of the white water is air. So in fact, when you see that beach with all those waves, only 25% of what you're looking at is water moving. It's an amazing thought, isn't it, you know? And we ride across lines of energy. Now, we've got a couple of waves that we're gonna talk about in uh, surfing. I mean, there's many waves, names in oceanography. The Hawaiians, bless them, they had 16, or still have, 16 different ways you could describe a way a wave breaks. But we're going to look at two main ones. First one, let's have a look at it. Here's our wave. It's coming in that direction. Here's our energy. And the beach is kind of flat. Yeah? And this wave... It topples downwards. It kind of what we say spills. Now there's two reasons why this may happen. Firstly, a very flat beach. The beach is pretty flat, but also really importantly, what we call an onshore wind. Now, an onshore wind is a, a wind from the sea onto the shore. It pushes the back of the wave down, it crumbles. It's what we call a spilling wave, okay? Now you can get cross shore as well, we'll talk about that wind uh, uh, another time. But onshore we're going to talk about the moment. Onshore, flat beach, spilling wave. Okay, what's the opposite of this? Here it is. Our plunging wave. Now our energy in this is really radically being thrown over and the bottom or the sand or the rocks is much much steeper so it feels that bottom and it <clears throat> throws itself forwards and the other thing that will really really affect and cause what we call a plunging wave is an offshore wind onshore with this one offshore it holds the wave up um, I remember in an American magazine they said manicures the wave well it kind of does it just makes it perfect holds it up but strange enough for when we're learning this is the better wave you know intermediate first turns and stuff this one's really hard to learn on this is what we aspire to this is where we want to be in a couple of years time flying through the barrel yeah great but when we're learning we look far more for the easier for the rolling wave okay 
You can have places where you've got a reef break and it's still on shore. But there's so much sort of like violence in the way the bottom of the, the, the energy meets the reef that it'll still create a bit of a tube even on an onshore day, okay? But the normal one will be the offshore wind. Now, next time you go to the beach, look. Look at the day and go, oh, is this a plunging kind of day? Is it like uh, a spilling wave? What's easiest? Start to look and get used to that wave pattern. Have a look at those lines of energy. See how they move and the water stays still, okay? Nice way to think about it. Think of a carpet. Somebody's holding the carpet and they shake the carpet. Now a wave goes through the carpet, but the carpet's still in the hands. So, you know, it's a nice kind of analogy of how energy moves through water. Created by wind, okay? Have a look at it next time you're at the beach.